How can we think more creatively? After all, we all need to do it in our work and in our life. Let's understand how the creative process works. We have all learnt our own individual ways of thinking, from childhood, through study, through work. We've developed tools and techniques, from de Bono's thinking hats through to mind maps. Repeating the same techniques time and time again can make us stale, so we need to learn new and exciting techniques. The environment in which we operate dramatically influences our thinking process. How easy is it to be distracted by emails? How much of the everyday noise creeps into our mind? We need to give our mind space to think. So we need to develop a process. A process that enables us to create the space to think and use the tools we've learnt. The process we've developed, called the creative cycle, develops habits that makes thinking creatively feel natural. It also taps into our subconscious mind, the most powerful tool we have for thinking creatively. It's believed that consciously we process around 40 thoughts per second, yet subconsciously we can process around 11 million. This immense processing power is at the heart of our ability to be creative. However, we've all developed our own bad thinking habits. The challenge for us all is to recognise what our thinking habits are and develop more effective ones. We have what's called the entrapped mind. What this means is we're blind to our own thinking habits, which makes it very difficult to learn new ones. These habits define how easily we access this subconscious mind. So how do we learn new ones? How are thinking habits formed? When we're born, our minds are empty of knowledge, but full of a hunger to learn. Who we are and our environment determines how much we learn and how we learn to learn. The speed and accuracy to which we can access this knowledge determines how intelligent we are. But creativity is our ability to make new thoughts, new connections, and bring them to life in many ways. There are many things that determine our thinking habits, from our personality, our happiness, how much forward, present or past-minded we are. There is no right or wrong to the way we think. Each aspect brings its own unique qualities. And two qualities that we're constantly trying to balance is how open-minded we are and how close-minded we are. We need both of these qualities. An open mind enables us to explore opportunities, to think differently. If we develop that as a form of expression, we become artists or we become academics. The consequence of an open mind is that we start to spin lots of plates in our mind. But if we're not careful, our mind just thinks that's what we're good at. And we start to overdevelop that, and we just spin plates for the sake of it. A closed mind is a mind of constraints, limiting beliefs. We become an island, cut off from distraction. These are just as important, as they keep us safe, and they help us focus on those immediate tasks. The disadvantage is we cut corners and go straight to an answer. So our ability to be creative boils down to a balance of these two things. So what sort of thinking habits do we want to develop in our mind? We want to create room for ideas to grow, but we also need to be aware of a bigger picture to put ideas outside our mind. This way, we can choose to be detached from ideas, not to be caught up in the heaviness of them, to see beyond those things, to see wider potential. So if you're serious about learning to think differently, to improve your imagination, then don't focus just on the tools. Understand your thinking habits, clear your mind, unlock your creative potential and let the ideas pour out.